Well, good morning. I do want to welcome you all to worship this morning, especially visitors out there. Hope you feel very welcome, and to help with that, let me kind of explain how service is going to work today. So on your way in, if you wanted a printed bulletin, you would have grabbed one of those on the way in back there. Otherwise, everything is up here on the screens, so you can follow along in either place. Uh, for communion, we, we have some different options, just because there's different needs for people. One of the options that we offer is in, in the pew option. There's not a little mechanism that brings communion right back to you. What you have to do is you have to grab one of the little packets out of the baskets back there uh, before you come in. And then all we have you do is we have you take it and hold it out in front of you as I speak the words of institution up front, and then you'll just take it right in the pew. So that was one option. The other option is we'll do continuous line communion up front. We have gluten-free hosts on this table. We'll have Pastor Craig distributing the regular hosts. We'll have wine and grape juice in individual cups. The grape juice is yellow. And then I'll be at the very end of the line with the common cup. So again, different options there. If you have the gluten allergy, we have something for you. And uh, again, that kind of thing, different options for people. If you're wondering about taking communion, you're a guest with us wondering about taking communion, here's what we do. In the pew there with you are these little index cards. In addition to a uh, place for kids to draw during you know, the sermon time when they're bored, um, those cards, you can fill them out. The back side of the card is actually our, what we, we believe the Lord's doing for us in the Lord's Supper. So if you agree with those statements on there, you're welcome to come up and commune with us today. If you have more questions, maybe hold off and talk to one of the pastors after service. Uh, but again, fill out the card. The front side of the card, we encourage everybody to fill out as well, members and visitors alike. But if you are a visitor, would like a phone call for, uh, with more information about the church, just check where it says interested in membership. If you don't check that, we don't call you, uh, but if we do send out just a letter thanking you for coming and visiting us the first time you visit. Otherwise, the last thing that we typically do in church is we say hello to people. Yeah, so how about we stand up and we say hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys? Alrighty, well blessings now as we sing our opening song today, Not, not What These Hands Have Done. Please rise for the invocation. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> if you can turn me down just a hair. All right. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them is set a tent for the sun, 
which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from pre presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves in the present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. Our Old Testament text comes from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven, that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the inequity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you and your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. 
Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Our epistle text comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the, wisdom of, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For considering your calling, brothers, not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the, ones who, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. We continue with our next hymn. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple. 
with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make the Father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn. And just a reminder, when we get towards the end of the hymn, uh, the, any of the young kids that want to make their way over to the children's message, Caleb Osmond's going to be handling that over there this, t- this week. So um, towards the end of the song, you can make your way out that way.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to kind of be doing something a little interesting today. And what I mean by that is we're going to be talking about the Ten Commandments, otherwise known as the Decalogue, the Ten Words. But we're going to be relating that to our second reading for today. So with that, let's read this first part, or this lower part, which is from our second reading. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So I want to ask you a, a kind of a false question, okay? And when I say by false question is this, this question's really wrong at its heart. But I want to explore something as I ask you this, okay? What do you think is more important for getting into heaven? The Ten Commandments or the cross of Jesus? How many people go with Ten Commandments? Two of you, okay. How many of you go with the cross of Jesus? How many of you don't know? <laughs> it's okay. I told you right away. This was a false question. Because the assumption is we should have only one or the other. The reality is to be saved, to go to heaven, we need the word of God taught to us in its fullness. <laughs> and in its fullness, it's going to contain the law, the Ten Commandments and any other rule that's in the Bible, as well as it's going to contain the gospel, which is the cross encapsulated. Here's the struggle. As human beings, we don't like things we don't understand. How many of you, if you've ever gotten something, maybe you bought it online somewhere, and the directions came and they made no sense? They were written in a foreign language, or they might as well have been. There were like a thousand parts that you had to put together, and you had terrible directions. It's like going to Ikea, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Or anywhere else, if you buy something online, furniture, yeah, you have to put it together. That's the way God's word can seem to us, especially in terms of the law. Now let's talk a little bit about the Ten Commandments. It's called the Decalogue because in, in Greek, Decalogue means ten words, okay? And basically, it's ten words in Hebrew. Now, there is some confusion. I'm going to just tell you guys flat out today. There is confusion over what the Ten Commandments are. What I mean by that is this. As Lutherans, we are weird. I don't know if you guys knew that already. Okay, yeah. We are weird because we number the commandments differently than all the rest of the Christian church. The rest of the Christian church has as number one, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. We have that same one, okay? For number two, though, they have, you shall have no graven images. Do you guys remember from catechism, what's our number two? Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. So we, we goof it up a little bit right away. doesn't really matter how they're numbered. The heart of the Ten Commandments is the same. The first of the few of them deal with our relationship with God, God wants to be number one. He doesn't want us to make any graven images. He doesn't want us to say things in his name that aren't true. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. And he wants us to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That's the first part of the, the God's law, the, the first table of the law, or tablet of the law, if you will. The second table of the law deals with the relationship of people and each other. Don't kill. Don't murder. You notice this also starts off with honor your father and mother. If you can't honor your parents, you're going to have a hard time in every other relationship in life. Right? Yeah. So that's why parents, if your kid lips off to you, give them one. <laughs> Doesn't matter what age. Because if you don't give them one, they're not going to get anything else. You're going to wonder why, Dave. Why do they treat their spouse so terribly? Because they treated you terribly. Yeah. Why did my kid kill somebody? Because they treated you like garbage. So smack. I'm just messing, okay? Yeah. Don't call me. Who's the guy online? Is it body, something or other? He, he said, smack your kids all the time. No, that's not what I'm saying here, okay? But teach them respect. 
You can teach a kid respect without smacking him. You can teach him respect with time out and other types of punishment, okay? It's just for me, smacking him, you know, it's kind of a little bit more pleasurable. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm messing, okay? I'm not trying to make light, okay? I am, actually. But, <laughs> but the, the, the law, it makes sense to us. The law makes sense to us in, in that it's things we can understand. Okay, here's some good boundaries. Do this, don't do that. But it only makes sense until we get to the part where we realize, I can't do these things the way I'm supposed to. I can't keep God's law the way I'm supposed to. And once we realize that, well, once we come to that realization, there's a fear that takes hold of us, a fear that consumes us, a fear that tells us again and again, we aren't worthy. You guys remember that from the 90s, right? Wayne's World, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. No. Kids are like, what the heck is he talking about? They have no clue. Yeah. Um, well, that brings us to the cross. Once we realize we're sinful and we can't keep God's law, now God's gospel enters the picture. And truly for our world today, the gospel is foolishness. The gospel is folly. Because the gospel says that our word our goodness, our righteousness, our salvation, our acceptance, our value, everything about us has nothing to do with us. I mean, picture this, okay? Here's what's so beautiful about Snapchat and Facebook and all the other things, all the other social media out there that have these filters. Because you can use a filter to change how you appear, right? You can go from being a middle-aged, almost 46-year-old bald man who's a few, a lot of pounds overweight, who has yellow teeth from drinking lots of coffee. And you can use that filter. You can use all the filters in Snapchat. You can try to break Snapchat, and you can suddenly turn into a person who has hair, whose teeth are white, who's skinny. And you put that out as your social media picture, right? And then people meet you in real person and they're like, who's this guy? That's my alter ego. <laughs> that's who I want to be, right? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what Jesus does, though. Instead of it being a filter or a lie, Jesus says that when we stand before him, when we stand before him and the Father and the Holy Spirit on Judgment Day, when Jesus looks at you and I, instead of seeing us, he will see himself. Instead of seeing our sins and the record of every sin we've committed in our lifetime, he will see his perfect righteousness that he imparted to us, gave to us substituted in our place when he died on the cross. To the world, this sounds like foolishness. To people who want to control things. I mean, at our heart, when we are anxious people, we want to control things, right? I don't know about you guys. When my anxiety takes off, what do I do? I do everything I can to control things, even things that are completely out of my control. They've had shows about this, like Monk. Right? You guys, anybody watch Monk? A few of you? Yeah. Monk tried to control the world by controlling his environment. And if he couldn't control his environment, he controlled what he touched or didn't touch. So if it was a little bally thing, he always had to touch it. He was going everywhere, touching. And if the, he thought it had germs, he wouldn't touch it, right? He'd put things in place of it. He had his assistant carry around all kinds of wipes all the time, right? This picture, you see somebody, they have wipes in their back pocket. They're touching everything with wipes, yeah. God's gospel does not make sense to us. 
To be told that we are loved in spite of us doesn't make sense. And yet that's what the cross is all about. Let's read further. Read this part, this part together. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Paul puts both of those parts in there at the very end, both the power of God and the wisdom of God, to negate what was thought in the Old Testament. Both in the Proverbs and the Psalms, the law of God, meaning the word of God, was thought not only to be the beginning of all wisdom, but also to give us power. Power to control the world around us. What Paul is saying here is that the cross, the cross of Christ, the work that Jesus did for salvation, this is actually our wisdom. This is actually our power. And it has nothing to do with us. Let's go on a little bit further. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. All right, let me wrap this up. Let me pull this all together. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus comes into a temple. He comes into a temple full of people doing what they thought they were supposed to do. They were supposed to sell these animals so that people could make sacrifices for the forgiveness of their sins. Jesus overturns their tables. He drives the animals out with a whip. Why? Why did Jesus throw everything they thought, everything they had believed, out the window? Because he was going to point them to him. He was the true Lamb of God. He was the Lamb that needed to be sacrificed. Not all the bulls, not all the pigeons, not all the sheep. He was the sacrifice that God was looking for ever since Adam and Eve sinned. And he was there to be that sacrifice. He drove them out because now, instead of God only living in a building like a temple or like our churches today, God has made his temple right here in each and every one of us. God has declared that each and every one of us He is willing to dwell in us. In fact, he is dwelling in us right now. Why? Because of what Jesus did in dying and rising. And what happened when the Holy Spirit, the helper, came on the day of Pentecost. And what he's doing through God's word. What he's doing is declaring us his children. Not by our works. Not by our actions but by his works and his actions. If I boil all that down, here's what it means, okay? That the most important thing for salvation, the place that we should be pointed when we're worried, am I going to go to heaven one day, is always the cross and the empty tomb that followed it. If somebody points us back to ourselves, If somebody points us to something in the world, get away from them. Because if we're going to be in heaven one day, it's all because of Jesus. That doesn't mean we go and we do whatever we want in life. The greatest way we can tell Jesus we love him is by trying to live according to the ten words, according to the law of God. We'll never do it perfectly. But we do it as a witness for the world to hear who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Depart in his peace and his joy. Amen. So we're going to continue at this time by collecting our offer.
I invite the congregation to rise now as we continue with the prayers of our church. So our special prayers this morning, we are praying for the family and friends of Janet Obrans. We had prayed for her last week as she was entering hospice. Um, she did end up passing away this week, so we pray for comfort uh, for her family in the midst of their loss. We also continue to pray for, especially for the family and friends of Mike Agamite and for Mike, uh, because he is still in hospice. Uh, so we pray for them in this very trying time. Uh, we also continue to pray for healing and strength for Lucas Connor and John Hain, Paul Rank and Charlie Peisler, Brian Dorner, Dale Wolski, Hayes Jaden, Bonnie Christensen, Brandy Lafave, for Melody, for Michael Lampy and Michael Funk, for Patty Fry and Faye Fridell, Michelle Phillips, Jeff Lampy, and Deb Roser. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you in a world, Lord, that would point us everywhere but to the cross for hope. A world that would point us to ourselves, to tell us to lean on our own strength, our own knowledge. Instead, Lord, you speak a message that's the opposite of the world. You point us to the cross for our value, for our goodness and righteousness, for our salvation. Help us, Lord, to be your messengers in this world today to speak the same folly that Paul and the twelve disciples spoke, to point people, Lord, not to themselves, but instead to the cross and the empty tomb, to the work that you did as our sacrificial lamb, whose blood covers all of our sin. Help us, Lord, to live our lives not for our own glory or value, but instead to live it for yours, to give you the honor, the respect. We pray also, Lord, today, for the Obrands family in the midst of their loss, that you would give them hope, Lord, hope in the promise you gave to Janet in the waters of her baptism, that promise that you continue to encourage every time she read your word and received your supper, that promise, Lord, that declared her your child, that she was washed clean of all her sins, even death had been conquered on her behalf. And it is because of that promise, Lord, today, that even in the midst of grief, her family may have hope. Hope because as your tomb was empty, so shall Janet's one day. We pray also, Lord, for the Agamite family and for Mike in the midst of his hospice care. That, Lord, you give him comfort, comfort knowing that everything has also been done for him for eternal life. And when that day is that you have prepared for him to come home, Lord, you will welcome him into that place you prepared for him. To comfort him and his loved ones, Lord, in the days ahead. Finally, Lord, we lift up those whose battle with sickness and pain seems like it will continue on earth. Give them strength, Lord, as they face cancer and heart problems, as they recover from surgeries or are preparing for them. Help them, Lord, in the midst of all that is going on in life, not only to have their faith strengthened in you, but to even serve you in their suffering, that others may know you as their Savior. But certainly, Lord, we pray for healing and healing soon. And so we lift up these prayers to you in Jesus' name, and as he has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you communing out there in the pew, if you please would take your little cups out of the bag and hold them up in front of you at this time. Welcome to the Lord's table. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. For those communing in the pew, please take, eat, and drink the very body and blood of Christ given for you. The rest of the congregation can have a seat. Take and eat the very body of Christ given unto death for all your sins.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve us all into life everlasting. Let us depart in God's peace and in his joy. Amen. We'll sing our closing song. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Well, again, I do want to thank you all for coming and worshiping with us today, especially visitors out there. Hope you felt welcome. They are invited back at any point in the future. Uh, in terms of special announcements, we got a lot of stuff. Highly encourage you to grab one of the announcement bulletins back there. I don't think there's actually a newsletter this month because there was kind of there, I didn't have an article, Pastor Craig didn't have an article, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that just kind of all got compiled into the, the uh, bulletin, right? Is that right, Candy? Yep, so I, if you want to grab, you'll notice there's a big stack of bulletins because we really encourage you to grab them. Uh, I believe the calendar and everything's in there as well. So again, uh, grab one of those on your way out. Um, I'll turn it over for Palm Sunday stuff coming up. Okay, yep. Uh, a couple quick things before that. This Tuesday, we're going to be finishing up our current cultural topic Bible study. Uh, starts at 5.30. We have dinner, study, and then we'll be done by 7. I think the next one we're going to be doing is a uh, biblical view of civil government. So that's going to be our next one. I don't know when we'll start that one. but uh, So March 11th, 6.30, we have a mission trip meeting coming up. Palm Sunday, uh, that is the 24th of March. Um, that is something that we always ask our youth and our parents to help out with. That's our big fundraiser for our mission trip. And then also anyone else that wants to help out, we appreciate the help. It's kind of a, a bigger um, event for us. So there is a sign-up sheet in the back if anybody's interested in helping with that. And then last thing, uh, today for our high school youth, we'll be in the back garage uh, for our study, and we're going to be starting a study on the Book of Romans. So if there's any high schoolers that want to join us. Sure. And if anybody has Thrive-In cards that they'd like to use toward the, uh, the Palm Sunday brunch, talk to Debbie Vandenberg, and that way she, you can give them to her, and then she can use them. Uh, but again, if you have, have Thrive-In cards, w anybody who has Thrive-In Action Team cards too, uh, there's a lot of different things. If you want to use them for stuff around church, we've got some work days coming up. Uh, if you want to volunteer for those, uh, just let one of us know or let the trustees know. Uh, because again, it's great. It's it's two hundred fifty dollars. You get two of those if you're a Thrivent member, and uh, you can use them for all kinds of things. So they're great starter money or money for food uh, for those who are doing the activities, that kind of stuff, uh, as well as you know other kind of materials. So if you're ever interested, if you have those, you haven't been using them, just let us know, and we'll help you figure out how to utilize those. Um, what else? There's donuts over here, so if you want to, right after service, come over and get some donuts, have some fellowship time. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. You're always welcome down for Bible study as well. Uh, I think there's, is there Farm Fresh Eggs back there, Lois? If anybody wants Farm Fresh Eggs. Huge thank you to Brad Vazer. Uh, he's one of our members who also has a plumbing company. Yesterday, uh, he came, actually Friday, he came and hooked up an additional gas line, ran it, uh, hooked it all up all around, uh, so we have better gas pressure in our kitchen. We can actually cook when it's cold out. Uh, so if you guys are in need of a plumber, just putting it out there, Brad Vazer is a member and he also does plumbing, so. Birthdays, okay, so who do we got for birthdays? Pat's got a birthday, okay. She turned 29, right, Pat? Yep, so we got Pat, who else for birthdays? Hans has a birthday, okay, so Pat and Hans. 
Am I seeing other hands? No. Okay, so we're going to sing happy birthday to Pat and Han. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pat and Hans. Happy birthday to you and many more. All right, we'll greet you back there. Remember, get your donuts, everybody.